Let's talk about correlation and causation and start off this discussion with correlation. A correlation is a relationship between two variables. In general, we'll refer to them as X and Y. A correlation is a relationship. One doesn't necessarily cause the other, and so it's shown by a double-headed arrow like the one you see here. A positive correlation is like going up, looks like going up a flight of steps. As X increases, Y increases. And so as X increases, Y increases. One step forward on X is one step forward on Y. In a negative correlation, as X increases, Y decreases. So one step forward on X is one step down on Y. That is a negative correlation. Now, not all, in fact, not any correlations are as strong as the ones I just showed you. In fact, if you ever see any as strong as the ones I just showed you, they're bad. They're saying you just measured the same thing twice. In general, what you have is a step forward on X that's related to, you know, a little bit of a step forward on Y sometimes and, and sometimes not so much. And there are little errors back and forth. And so you have the line that re represents the relationship, the blue line, and then the orange arrows, which represent no relationship, places where the relationship doesn't exist. <coughs> As more and more of those orange arrows start to accrue, the less likely you are to have a relationship at all. So in this example, there's no relationship at all. As X moves forward one step, we have no idea what's going to happen to Y. That's no relationship. So in summary, summation, any relationship is good. That tells us that Y and X are related. It's zero relationship that isn't good. Correlations range from negative one, where one step forward on X equals one step down on Y, to positive one, where one step forward on X equals one step up on Y. And then zero is one step forward on X means we have no idea what's going to happen to Y. One, good. Zero, nothing. Negative one, also good. Now in psychology, the real world, what we're really looking for is around a negative to a positive 0.3 to maybe 0.6 would be realistic correlations for psychology. Let's look at an example. Here I have variable one or variable X um, and variable Y and I'm looking at three sets of grades from Naisha, Ming, and Amit and the number of hours they spent studying. So they could spend one, two, three, four, five, six hours studying. And then their relationship to the grades they got. And if you look at that first line, the red line, Naisha, every time she studied, her and grades improved. So the more she studied, the better her grades got. For Ming, there was a little bit of relationship there but for a me, there really wasn't any relationship at all. So no matter what a me did, he didn't improve at all. At the end of the day, what we care about is what caused Naisha's grades to improve a lot when she studied, but it meets grades barely to improve at all. It could be anything from Naisha's studying better than Ami is, so she has better study habits, or she organizes her material better, or 
she's not doing other things when she's studying or they're actually taking two different classes and the professor gives a meet bad lecture notes and so it has nothing to do with a meet at all and so the relationship here might actually not have anything to do with Naisha and a meet it might very well have to do with some third factor In American society, the number one third factor variable that psychologists hate to look at is the much publicized relationship between TV violence and aggressiveness. There is a correlation between TV violence and aggressiveness. Say what? There is, there's a correlation there. That doesn't mean that TV violence causes aggressiveness. Let's look at two shows. This first one is from, sorry, lost my mouse there. This first one is from Old Boy. Oh, by the way, I should warn you, there might be a little blood here and it's pretty violent. In my humble opinion, this is one of my top 10 favorite fight scenes of all time. And this is not related to psychology at all. This is just related to, I think this is one of the best fight scenes of all time. It wasn't even in the manga. I didn't realize that there was swearing in this, I apologize. Now you might ask me what else I think of as good fight scenes. And there's an old film called They Live that has an excellent down and out fight scene. Um, there is an excellent fight scene in the television show Daredevil, a wonderful fight scene um, in an old Jackie Chan film called Gorgeous. There's two boxing scenes in that. And the first one is brilliant. Now, you have to watch a lot of really terrible movie to get to that brilliant fight scene. But, let's see, what else do I think is good? Gosh, I can't remember anything right now. There's an excellent fight scene between Ken Lo and Jackie Chan, but I can't remember what the film is. It's brilliant. But, back to old boy. Now, every time that there is a school shooting or um, a violent act involving a minor. The media loves to pull out this TV violence aggressiveness relationship. Let's take a look at another type of aggressiveness seen on television. This is more of a passive aggressiveness. This is from the film Love Actually. 
Yes, um, that necklace there, how much is it? It's 270 pounds. Um, all right, uh, I'll have it. Lovely. Would you like it gift wrapped? This no, man is Lovely. buying a present for his mistress. Let me just pop it in the box. And he's looking around because Left. his wife is also at the Look, mall with him. Could we him. be quite quick? Certainly, sir. Ready in the flashiest of flashes. There. It's great. Not quite finished. Look, actually, I don't, I don't need a bag. I'll just put it in my pocket. No, this isn't a bag, sir. Really? This is so much more than a bag. What's that? It's a cinnamon stick, sir. Actually, I really uh, can't wait. Oh, you won't regret it, sir. Want to bet? It is but the work of a moment. Yeah, almost finished. Almost finished. What else going to be? You're going to dip it in yogurt, cover it with chocolate buttons. Who knows? We're going to pop it in the Christmas box. But I don't want a Christmas box. But you said you wanted it gift wrapped. I did. But... This is the final flourish. Can I just pay? All we need now. Oh God! Is a sprig of holly? No, 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 no bloody holly. But sir, the... uh, leave it, leave it, just leave it. Not you around the jewellery section, I see. No, I was just looking Don't around. Worry. Yeah. My expectations are not that high after 13 years of Mr. Oh, but you always love scarves. So, which one of those left you feeling more tense at the end? If it's the one on the right, you can understand because it's a very frustrating situation. Frustration does lead to aggressiveness, and that is a protective relationship. However, the show on the left is only correlated with aggression. In fact, what we find is that what is really correlated with aggression is a lack of parental supervision while kids are watching violent films. And that's the real correlation and the real predictive relationship. If you don't have folks with you, it's one type of situation you do, it's another. So lack of parental supervision combined with a tendency to watch violent film is predictive of aggressiveness. But if you watch violent films, sometimes with your parents, then it isn't predictive. We call this the third variable problem. Matched samples and matched pairs. In the real world, when we're looking at something that's already happened, the best we can do in order to rule out the third variable is to match our sample or our individual participants. And this way, anything that might have happened in the real world that was unique to something in one group may also have happened to the other. In a matched sample, we match one group to the other group on their demographics. In a matched pair, each child within one group or each person within one group is matched to a specific person in the other group. And that is a matched pair. Matched pairs are much stronger than matched samples. A few years ago, I did a study with death row participants and that was a case where those individuals are so unique that I felt it was important to do matched pairs with somebody else who had matching on everything 
except for living on death row. In general, we use matched samples. It's not as stringent, but it's not as time consuming. No matter what happens, you can never dismiss all potential third variables. You know, the fact is, a lot of things happen to us in life. You never know everything that happens to your participants. Um, there is a huge correlation between Coca-Cola consumption and violence. It's a spurious third variable. That means it's a random third variable. I wonder what it could be. You should look that up maybe on the internet. Yeah. So that is our quick summary of correlation versus causation.